Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, it is good to welcome you to worship on this second Sunday of Advent, to welcome those of you who are joining us online and those of you who are in person. It is a great gift to be able to worship God with other people. As we come to worship today, I invite us to prepare ourselves by first letting our breath out and with that letting go of anything that keeps us from focusing on God in this time together. And then breathe in deeply and let yourself be filled with the love and hope that God brings into your life. And then breathe out once again. And this time, when you breathe out, let it be a breath that is full of hope and let yourself remember this week that with every time you exhale, you have the chance to add more hope into your world and to share that with a world that needs that so much. As we light our second Advent candle, please join us in singing verses one and two of Light One Candle for Messiah. Our first reading today comes from Malachi, chapter 3. A reading from the book of Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a, ref a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. The word from Holy Scripture inspired by the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Please stand and join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please join in singing.
please be seated. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit for the reading of the gospel. The Holy 
Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod the ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Triconitis, and Licinius, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able to raise up from these stones children of Abraham. Even now, the axe is lying at the root of the trees Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then shall we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what shall we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water. The one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Let us pray. God, take the words of my mouth and take the meditations of each one of our hearts and make them yours. And show us, show us once again how to faithfully follow Jesus Christ. Amen. It doesn't sound like John was preaching such good news to the people. Who invited John the Baptist for the holidays? Who invited this desert prophet to intrude upon the loveliness of this festive season? We have a tree, it has lights on it. Some of you, like me, have probably baked cookies this week and spent some time with friends and family, and we're hearing some of the most lovely music that has ever been written. And yet, year and year, if we look at the lectionary passages for Advent, we 
bump right up into John the Baptist, the voice crying out in the wilderness. Does he have to cry such a strident song? Who invited this guy? Now, John is not the one we wait for at Christmas. He comes instead to prepare us for the Christ for whom we wait, and how do we get ready? John's answer is different than decking the halls, and it's a lot more simple. Whoever has two coats, share with someone who has none. Whoever has food, do likewise. That's what John says you do to prepare for the coming of Messiah. Ask us how you get ready to prepare for the coming of Jesus, and we'd probably give a different answer. And if it's a religious answer, it might go something like this. How do you live for Christ? Well, you're baptized, and then you're confirmed, and you join the church, you read the Bible, you sing some hymns, you pray some prayers. Nothing wrong with that. Healthy faith will always sing and pray and read the scriptures. But when you listen to these words of John, there's no missing the point that there's more to following Jesus than being religious. I remember a play about a Christian entering heaven. He goes up to the pearly gates, and he knocks and he says, as if everyone should rejoice, I'm here. And then he proceeds to list his religious achievements. I was baptized at six months, accepted Jesus at age 10, joined the church, sought, taught Sunday school, sang in the choir. And he goes on and on. And then he's out of breath and there's a long silence and then a voice from heaven says, I was hungry and you did not feed me, alone and you did not visit me, naked and you left me uncovered. You read the Gospels and you see an uncomfortable truth. A faith that does not love, it's not Christian faith at all. In fact, it's a kind of a religious perversion. And according to John the Baptist, love is not a misty-eyed notion. It's about really specific actions. If you have two coats, share it with someone who has none. If you have food, do likewise. Can we be honest enough to admit that John the Baptist really is a pain in the neck? <laughs> A prophet who we just as soon push aside? And if we have to deal with him at all, wouldn't it make more sense to include him in our thinking sometime after Christmas? After Jesus is born? After we've enjoyed the anticipation that adds to this festive season? But no. John the Baptist intrudes on all of our loveliness and gives us a practical, mundane message. Heard a story of a man who went to see a saint in hopes of inspiration. He wanted a more spiritual life. He spent about an hour with the saint. And then the man left, and he was really angry. He said, I wanted heavenly things. And he asked me about my check stubs. Isn't that a bit what John's preaching feels like to us. Prepare the way of the Lord, he says. And that sounds so good. But then he goes on to say exactly how to do that. Share your food, share your clothing, don't cheat people, and no bullying. So, what is it that makes the church put John the Baptist right now? Why are we listening to him preach about repentance before Jesus has even had a chance to be born? I suspect that we all already know the reason. It's a needed correction to the sentimentality of Christmas. The best 
wisdom of the church knows that we still need to be reminded of what Jesus' life was about. Jesus came not only to give us peace, not only to save us, but to change us. That baby born in a manger, well, he comes and turns everything upside down, turns us upside down. So what we get here is a wake up call when faced with so great and different a kingdom as the one that Jesus brings, you and I, we need to repent, to turn around, to change through deeds that are as simple and as costly and as specific as sharing our clothes and our food. Repentance is about more than listing all the things that you wish you'd done in your life, or perhaps those that you wish you hadn't done, and feeling sorry. It's not about trying to dilute those things with our regrets or wish we were better people or keeping a tally of our faults as if maybe God might overlook them if only we can convince God that we're really, really, really sorry. And it's about more than developing a self-improvement plan or even deciding to be nicer or more generous or even more spiritual. Repentance is something that we have to take part in, but it's not really under our control. Ultimately, it's more about something that happens to us than something we decide. Repentance is when a person comes back from a trip to another country where children are too thin and go barefoot year round. So repentance is that moment when he walks through the front door of his house and everything looks different. His living room, it looks like a museum filled with lovely, unnecessary things. His kitchen overwhelms him with three sets of dishes and more food than he could possibly eat. And his closet is so full of clothes that he has things in there he hadn't worn in years. For years, he has thought of himself as comfortable, and suddenly he realizes that he is rich. He has so much more than he needs that he starts planning to give it away. Repentance is when a person wakes up in the middle of the night with a pain or a lump, or a fever. And while she, there, she lies there wondering whether it is something or nothing, her life begins to look different to her. She begins to count the people who she loves, the people who love her, and to think about the things that she meant to do as soon as she had time, and whether she has 10 days to live or 10,000 she decides to take the time and make every moment count. Repentance is when you have your life set, career established, retirement plan begun, daily routine streamlined for maximum efficiency and comfort, and someone else comes into that life with a need that is too big to be easily met. You know, an elderly parent, or a sick friend, or spouse, or a wounded child. And suddenly everything looks different. One way of life dissolves before your eyes, and another one takes its place, and a life in which you are intimately involved in caring for another human being. And some days you love what you're doing, and some days you hate it but still you have a sneaking suspicion that this is why you were born and that it is the only thing in the world worth doing. Repentance is a complete 
turnaround, a change of course, a change of heart and mind and life. Repentance is less about what you feel and more about what you do. Repentance is too busy redeeming the present to dwell on what happened in the past. Repentance focuses less on hating the bad than on loving the good. Repentance is a matter of being grasped by God, of being picked up and put down again so that everything looks different and you lose your old bearings and receive some new ones in their place. That's what God does. Our part is to have the good sense to say yes and thank you instead of no, thank you, not yet. And to be guided by new ways of being instead of scrambling back to our old familiar ones. Repentance is not something that only happens once. Life is full of those turning points, big and small, Moments when we're offered a new way of looking at things, a new place to stand, a new direction. Those moments, they are exciting and they are disorienting and they are frightening and they are liberating all at once, which makes them easy to push aside. After the storm has passed, after the fever is gone, the grief has lessened, the baby has been toilet trained. <laughs> it's easy to forget how different things looked for a while, how brand new and wide open they were. So how fortunate it is for us that the Lord is coming the Lord who is full of such moments, repent, John says, change. It's an invitation to be lifted up, to be turned around, to face the one whose very message is love. So prepare a way for him. Make the path straight. And understand that even as you do this, it is the Spirit of God working in you, working in all of us, making all things new. Thanks be to God. May our Advent change something in us that needs changing, something that will prepare us to welcome the Christ child. Amen. I invite you to stand and join in singing together.
one voice, let us profess the one in whom we have faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Good and great God, we come before you in need of help for ourselves and for others. Hear us now as we pray. Eternal God, we are an impatient people. We want everything to be just right, right now. Give us the patience to look toward your time instead of our own. God, in your compassion, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, reform us during this Advent. Help us to see the world through your eyes. Help us, like John, to point to Jesus. When others look at us, may they see people who follow the one who came as an infant so many years ago. God, in your compassion, hear our prayer. Gracious God, breed generosity in us. Help us to repent of all selfishness, fearfulness, protection of self at the cost of others. Open our eyes to see what, lo what enough looks like and move us to share whatever is more than enough. We know that we have coats and food enough to share. God, in your compassion, hear our prayer. Demanding God, we hear your call to change. We confess that we do, do not much like to change, yet you call us to do so. Change us in our very selves, in the families, in our families and our church, that we might live more like you call us to live. God, in your compassion, hear our prayer. Tender God, people across the whole world are hurting. The hungry need food, the homeless need shelter, the sick need healing, the lonely need companionship. Children need to be able to learn without the threat of violence. We pray on their behalf and ask that you use us as instruments of your good purposes. God, in your compassion, hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. You're invited to share the peace of Christ with one another. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, 
With the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. And after he had given thanks for it, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, it is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took a cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, it is sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. The gifts of God for the people of God. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The choir will come forward first to receive communion, we invite you to follow them and to first come to the bread and then the cup and after you partake to return to your seats. Come now for all is ready.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We have a few announcements before we continue with the service. First of all, Steve has asked me to mention to you guys that his group, the Jefferson Chorale, an affiliate of the Jefferson Performing Arts Society, is going to be performing on Thursday, December 9th at 7.30 p.m. at St. Agnes Catholic Church in Jefferson. Uh, the performance is free and open to the public, but donations are appreciated and masks are required. So if you would like to join Steve in his chorale on December 9th at 7.30 p.m., if you're here in the sanctuary, please stop and talk to him. He has some flyers. He can give you a copy. And if not, you can email me at info at grace, and I'll, I'll send you the information. Good morning again to everyone. If you're with us for the first time and you're here in the sanctuary, please be sure to introduce yourself to Pastor Kim and then stop by the media booth right on the corner. We have some little cards that would like you to fill out one just so we can stay connected with you. We promise we will not hound you. If you're watching online, don't forget to click the subscribe button so that you'll get an alert every time we go live or upload a new video. And always, please feel free to visit our website at gracenola.org so you can learn more about us, sign up for our mailing list, and you can click the Give Now button to submit your offering if you're watching online. Click the Give Now button and then just select the uh, fund of your choice and then you'll be able to sign up for electronic giving that way. Before you do any more Christmas shopping on Amazon, please make sure that you have Grace designated as your Amazon charity of choice. Amazon Smile is a program that donates 0.5% of your eligible purchases on Amazon to, charity of, to the charity of your choice at no cost to you. Remember to locate and select Grace as your charity. Go to Grace's website, you, you click on the Amazon Smile button that's about midway down on the page. Once you've selected us, you must start your shopping at smile.amazon.com in order for Grace to earn the rewards. I bought some more Christmas gifts this week. I have now donated $2 million to Grace. <laughs> it's getting better every week. Chuck it in the bucket for December will be a collection for a small family, victims of Hurricane Ida. Having suffered great losses during the hurricane, they need support to celebrate Christmas this year. The mother has some medical issues and Grace is collecting to give her a gift card to buy Christmas presents for her young son. Won't you help them out? You can donate by checking your change and extremely large wads of cash into the bucket <laughs> as you leave the sanctuary today or by visiting gracenola.org and clicking that Give Now button I showed you a minute ago. Just make sure you click Chuck It in the Bucket from the fun list. We also continue to collect non-perishables for second harvest. Proteins are always needed and for use in the Grace Cares bags as well. Drinks, plastic forks, spoons, individually wrapped snacks. Thank you for your support with that. If you want to look at a complete list, you can visit our website and go to the outreach page and click the Grace Cares button to see the full list of items. Hark the herald angels sing, and so do we. This is next Sunday, you guys, that we're starting this. We are co-hosting two caroling events with our neighbors from Lakeview Presbyterian Church. They'll be held next Sunday, December 12th, from 5 to 6 at Lakeview Presbyterian, which is right up the street from us at 15, 59 14 Canal. And Sunday, December 19th, we'll be here at Grace from 5 to 6. Join us for caroling and beverages. We'll be outside singing Christmas carols together, and we'll have some sheets for you to read from. But we will take requests, as long as you're willing to start us out, and as long as you sing on key. Beverages will be provided. No, I'm just kidding. You don't have to sing on key. 
None of the rest of us do. All right, so Pastor Kim's office hours have changed slightly, and she just wants me to remind you that she will have office hours on Tuesday mornings from 8 to 10 at Morning Call on Canal and City Park. Wednesday afternoons from 2 to 4. At Nola, At Nola Beans. I'm sorry, I confused myself. I did that wrong. Okay, so it should say Wednesday 2 to 4, Nola Beans. Apologies for that. And Thursday afternoons from noon to 2. No, 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 no. If you want to meet at Grace, wow, I just totally botched that up. I'm, I'm just trying to prove to y'all that I'm not perfect because I know people were wondering. But uh, <laughs> anyway, ignore the slide and just do what I said, or maybe not. Uh, if you want an appointment with Pastor Kim here at Grace, please just email her. Wednesday, 2 to 4, no Levine. Sorry about that. I totally messed that up. Oh, and today is the first Sunday in December. Now, generally, we celebrate birthdays birthdays on the first Sunday of the month and we sing happy birthday. But since this is December and we know that December babies always get cheated anyway, we're just going to sing we wish you a Merry Christmas. Uh, now nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, go ahead and combine my birthday and Christmas present. I don't mind, said no December baby ever. If you were born in December, we offer our sincerest apologies for all the combined and forgotten gifts over the years, and we invite you to stand now as we sing happy birthday with some extra excitement to celebrate you. Norman? Yeah, Merry Christmas, y'all. I mean, happy birthday. <laughs> uh, we also want to wish a very happy anniversary to Janet and Bill Danner. This year, on the 10th, the Danners will be celebrating 61, y'all, that's older than me, 61 years of marriage. It's incredible. AJ... <laughs> AJ told me he asked Bill one time what was the secret to a long-lasting marriage, and Bill said, that's easy. When we got married, we agreed that Janet would make all the big decisions, or the little decisions, and I would make all the big ones. AJ said, Bill, give me an example of a big decision. He said, I don't know. We haven't had any yet. <laughs> now, <laughs> uh, Janet told me that when they got married, Bill's mom just warned her that there would be no refunds or exchanges, because after all, she had gotten him on clearance. Happy anniversary to Bill and Janet. And if you have any questions about these or any announcements, please feel free to email us at info at gracenola.org. And if you have questions of our leadership team, you can email them at leadership at gracenola.org. Pastor Kim, see if you can top that, man. I'm, I'm learning from your humor. I cannot top that, Tina. <laughs> Clearly, you have already received a blessing from the Tina show. <laughs> but let us stand anyway and receive a more liturgical blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And now let us sing together.
Go in peace. God is with you. Thanks be to God. Those are the I would really. Yeah. Yeah.